Have you ever wondered what would happen if Tony Stark's genius level intellect met a universe where there is only war? Today, we're breaking down the science behind why Iron Man would get absolutely destroyed in Warhammer 40k. The grim dark future doesn't care about your arc reactor or your witty one-liners. We're talking about space marines who can punch through tank armor, tyranids that evolve immunity to your weapons mid-battle, orcs whose technology works purely because they believe it should, chaos gods that rewrite reality itself, and necrons with molecular disintegration weapons. Each threat gets a survival percentage based on real physics and biology. Let's start with what most people think would be Iron Man's best matchup. The numbers tell a different story entirely. A standard Astartes bolter fires 75 caliber explosive rounds. That's nearly twice the diameter of a 50 caliber bullet, and each round contains a massive reactive tip that detonates after penetration. We're looking at roughly 3,000 foot-pounds of kinetic energy per shot, comparable to anti-materiel rifles used against light armor. Iron Man's suit has withstood tank shells, but those hit in single impacts. Bolters fire in full auto bursts of four to six rounds per second. The real problem isn't the firepower, it's the wielder. Space Marines average eight feet tall and weigh 700 pounds without armor. Their reaction times are enhanced to superhuman levels through genetic modification and neural implants. When Tony's suit registers a threat and begins evasive maneuvers, the Space Marine has already adjusted his aim and fired three more rounds. But here's where the physics gets brutal. A Space Marine's power fist generates over 2,000 PSI of crushing force, enough to crumple a car engine block. The suit's repulsors might keep distance, but if that Astartes closes to melee range, we're talking about forces that exceed the structural limits of any human portable armor system. Tony's best advantage is mobility and ranged combat. His repulsors output roughly 8 megajoules per blast, equivalent to 4 pounds of TNT. That's enough to seriously damage even power armor. The problem is ammunition. Iron Man's suit carries limited shots before requiring recharge, while a Space Marine can fight for days without resupplying. Let's run a realistic scenario. Tony spots the Space Marine at 200 meters and immediately opens fire with repulsors. The Astartes takes cover and returns bolter fire while advancing. Tony's suit can probably absorb the first dozen hits, but structural stress accumulates. Meanwhile, the Space Marine's enhanced physiology lets him shrug off near misses that would kill normal humans. The turning point comes when Tony tries to maintain distance. Space Marines can sprint at 35 miles per hour in full armor and leap 15-foot gaps. Once that warrior closes to 50 meters, Tony's targeting systems can't track fast enough to guarantee hits on a target moving with superhuman agility. Even if Tony lands every shot, Space Marines have survived building collapses and artillery strikes. Their enhanced biology includes redundant organs, reinforced rib cages, and pain suppression glands. You're not fighting a human in armor. You're fighting a genetically engineered weapon that weighs more than a motorcycle and moves faster than Olympic sprinters. Tony's survival chance against a single Space Marine sits at about 15%. That assumes perfect conditions open terrain, maximum ammunition, and no backup for the Astartes. In any realistic combat scenario, the numbers drop fast. Space Marines don't fight fair, they don't fight alone, and they definitely don't give you time to analyze their weaknesses. If a single Space Marine gives Tony a 15% survival chance, facing a Tyranid Swarm drops that number to practically zero. We're not talking about individual opponents anymore. We're talking about a biological apocalypse that operates on hive mind principles beyond human comprehension. Tyranid bioweapons make conventional ammunition look primitive. Their standard bioplasma can reach temperatures of 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But the real nightmare is their acid weaponry. Tyranid bioacid doesn't just burn through materials. It breaks down molecular bonds at the chemical level. Tony's suit relies on a gold titanium alloy that can withstand tremendous heat and impact against tyranid acid, those materials become irrelevant. We're looking at chemical reactions that operate faster than the suit's self-repair systems could possibly compensate for. One direct hit from a Carnifex's bioplasma and Tony's looking at catastrophic structural failure within seconds. But individual bioweapons aren't the real threat, it's the numbers. A single hive fleet contains billions of organisms, from human-sized hormigaunts to building-sized hierophants. 
Tony's suit might carry enough ammunition for a few hundred targets, maybe a thousand if he's conservative with his shots. Tyranids attack in waves of millions. Let's run the math on ammunition consumption. Tony's repulsors require significant energy per shot. His arc reactor outputs roughly 8 terawatts, but that power gets distributed across flight systems, life support, targeting computers and weapons. In sustained combat, he might manage 200 to 300 repulsor blasts before requiring recharge. Against a Tyranid swarm, that's like trying to empty the ocean with a teaspoon. The hive mind coordination makes conventional tactics useless. Friday's tactical analysis systems are designed to predict human behavior patterns and conventional military strategies. Tyranids don't follow those rules. They coordinate through psychic synapses that operate faster than electronic communication. When Tony targets the largest threats, smaller organisms automatically adjust their positions to protect high-value bioforms. Here's where the science gets terrifying. Tyranid adaptation happens in real time. Their genetic material can evolve immunity to specific threats within hours of first exposure. Tony hits them with repulsors in the first wave, and by the third wave, they've developed bioelectric fields that disperse energy weapons. This isn't theoretical evolution over generations. This is biological engineering happening faster than Tony can modify his tactics. The Carnifex scenario illustrates the scale problem perfectly. These creatures weigh 15 tons and can charge at 40 miles per hour. That's 600,000 pounds of kinetic energy hitting Tony's suit. His suit survived similar impacts from the Hulk, but that was one collision. Carnifexes travel in packs, and they're just the medium-sized bioforms. Even if Tony somehow survives the initial assault, Tyranids don't retreat or regroup like human armies. They consume biomass from fallen enemies and allies alike, growing stronger throughout the battle. Every dead Tyranid becomes raw material for spawning organisms. Tony's not just fighting an army, he's fighting a self-replicating biological weapon system that gets more dangerous the longer the battle continues. The only realistic survival strategy involves immediate orbital extraction before the swarm can surround his position. Once Tyranids establish air superiority with flying bioforms like gargoyles and harpies, even that option disappears. We're looking at a 5% survival chance, and that assumes Tony recognizes the threat level immediately and calls for evacuation within the first 30 seconds of contact. Now we get to the faction that breaks every rule of physics and engineering. Orcs represent Tony Stark's ultimate nightmare, technology that functions purely because its users believe it should. The WOG field is where conventional science stops applying. This psychic energy field generated by large orc populations literally makes impossible technology function correctly. Orc vehicles held together with scrap metal and wishful thinking can outperform human engineering marvels. Their weapons shouldn't fire, their engines shouldn't run, and their aircraft definitely shouldn't fly, but they do, because millions of orcs collectively believe they will. Tony's entire worldview depends on predictable physical laws and rational engineering principles. Against orcs, those advantages become liabilities. His suit sensors detect weapons that appear to be junk, so Friday's threat assessment algorithms categorize them as low-priority targets. Then those harmless scrap cannons punch holes through his armor because 50,000 orcs nearby think they're the most dangerous weapons in the galaxy. The DACA principle epitomizes orc tactical doctrine. More firepower is always better, and the best way to hit your target is to shoot so many bullets that missing becomes statistically impossible. A single orc big shooter fires roughly 600 rounds per minute of 75 caliber ammunition. Now multiply that by several thousand orcs in a typical WOG, all firing simultaneously in Tony's general direction. Tony's suit can dodge individual projectiles and even handle focused fire from conventional weapons, but orc DACA creates literal walls of bullets moving at supersonic speeds. The mathematical probability of finding safe flight paths through that volume of fire approaches zero. Even with superhuman reflexes and advanced targeting computers, you can't dodge everything when everything includes several million bullets per minute. Orc mech technology adds another layer of unpredictability. These crude engineers build force fields from car parts and create teleportation devices using scavenged electronics. The technology shouldn't work according to any known scientific principles, but the WOG field makes it function anyway. 
Tony's suit gets hit by a teleporting rocket that phases through his shields because the mech who built it was absolutely convinced that's how teleportation works. The real problem is that Tony can't counter-engineer orc technology because it doesn't follow consistent rules. One orc's shooter might fire explosive rounds while an identical weapon fires armor-piercing bullets, purely based on what each orc expects their gun to do. Friday's adaptive systems can't predict or compensate for weapons that operate on collective belief rather than physics. Tony's survival chance against a major orc wog sits at around 25% higher than the other factions, but for all the wrong reasons. Orc unpredictability cuts both ways. Their weapons might punch through his armor, or they might explode in the user's hands because nobody remembered to paint them the right color. In the grim dark future, sometimes your best defense is your enemy's complete disregard for logical engineering. Chaos. We're not talking about conventional warfare anymore. We're talking about forces that operate outside the fundamental laws of physics where reality becomes negotiable and sanity is the first casualty. The warp defies every scientific principle Tony's ever relied upon. This psychic dimension exists parallel to normal space, where thoughts become physical forces and emotions can literally reshape matter. When chaos forces manifest in real space, they bring warp physics with them. Tony's suit sensors start detecting impossible readings, energy signatures that violate conservation laws, gravitational fields that point in multiple directions simultaneously, and electromagnetic radiation that somehow carries malevolent intent. Demonic possession represents Tony's worst nightmare scenario. His entire combat effectiveness depends on the suit's AI systems and his own rational decision-making. Chaos corruption targets both simultaneously. Korn's influence amplifies rage and bloodlust beyond rational control. Even Tony's legendary ego becomes a weapon against him as the blood god feeds on his pride and transforms it into berserker fury. Picture Tony in the middle of a tactical analysis, weighing options and calculating optimal strategies when Korn's influence hits his mind. Suddenly, complex problem solving becomes impossible. The only thought that makes sense is charging directly into melee combat against opponents designed to tear apart armored vehicles with their bare hands. His genius-level intellect becomes irrelevant when primal rage overwhelms every cognitive function. Zinch presents a different kind of horror, the corruption of knowledge itself. The changer of ways doesn't just attack Tony's body or emotions, it attacks his understanding of reality. Suit sensors start providing contradictory data that somehow makes perfect sense until Tony tries to act on it. His targeting systems lock onto enemies that exist in 17 different locations simultaneously. Flight navigation becomes impossible when up and down keeps switching places according to Zinch's whims. The really insidious part is that chaos corruption feels like enhancement at first. Tony starts noticing patterns in combat data that reveal enemy weaknesses with supernatural clarity. His engineering insights reach impossible levels of sophistication. The arc reactor's output increases beyond theoretical limits. Only later does he realize that these improvements come with a price, his soul. Machine spirits add another layer of vulnerability that Tony never considered. In the 40K universe, sufficiently complex technology develops a form of consciousness. Tony's suit, with its advanced AI systems and sophisticated engineering, would be prime real estate for chaos corruption. Friday doesn't just get hacked, she gets possessed by demonic entities that understand technology better than Tony ever could. The scale of chaos influence makes conventional resistance strategies useless. Tony can't engineer a solution to problems that operate outside engineering principles. He can't outthink opponents who rewrite the rules of logic itself. When reality becomes optional, even genius-level intellect becomes just another tool for chaos to corrupt and turn against its wielder. Tony's survival chance against direct chaos exposure drops to 2%. That assumes he recognizes the threat immediately and evacuates before warp influence can take hold. Once chaos corruption begins, survival becomes irrelevant. Even if Tony's body survives, his mind and soul belong to the Dark Gods. Necrons represent their ultimate mastery. These ancient machines have spent 60 million years perfecting technology that makes Tony's most advanced innovations look like stone tools. Gauss' weapon operates on principles that violate everything Tony understands about energy and matter. These weapons don't just damage targets, they systematically disintegrate them at the molecular level. A Gauss flare strips away skin, muscle, and bone in precise layers, reducing living targets to component atoms in seconds. 
Tony's suit might protect against conventional energy weapons, but Gauss technology attacks matter itself. The physics behind molecular disintegration requires energy levels that dwarf anything in Tony's arsenal. We're talking about breaking atomic bonds across an entire target simultaneously. His arc reactor outputs 8 terawatts, which sounds impressive, until you realize that Gauss weapons casually manipulate forces equivalent to small nuclear reactions with pinpoint accuracy. Living metal technology represents engineering beyond human comprehension. Necron constructions can regenerate from complete destruction, rebuilding themselves from scattered atoms using principles that makes Tony's self-repair systems look primitive. He might land a perfect shot that reduces a Necron warrior to metallic dust, only to watch that dust reassemble itself into a functional combat unit within minutes. The regeneration process doesn't just restore original functionality, it adapts to counter whatever destroyed the unit initially. Tony's repulsors might work once, but the rebuilt Necron returns with improved resistance to energy weapons. Each destroyed enemy becomes a learning experience from an intelligence that's had millions of years to perfect adaptive warfare. Quantum shielding adds another impossible layer of defense. Necron defensive systems don't just absorb or deflect attacks. They phase incoming damage out of reality entirely. Tony's most powerful weapons simply cease to exist when they encounter quantum shields. The energy doesn't get absorbed or redirected, it gets removed from the universe as if it never existed. Chronometry weapons represent the ultimate expression of Necron technological superiority. These devices manipulate local time fields, slowing enemy movements to near stillness or accelerating friendly units beyond normal perception speeds. Tony might fire a repulsor blast and watch it crawl through the air at walking speed while Necron warriors move around it with casual ease. Tony's enhanced reflexes and Friday's processing power become irrelevant when enemies can literally step outside the normal flow of time. Combat becomes less about superior firepower or tactics and more about fundamental control over the basic structure of reality. Tony's survival chance against Necron technology sits at 1%. That single percentage point assumes he encounters a lone, damaged warrior with malfunctioning systems. Against fully operational Necron forces with their complete technological arsenal, survival becomes a mathematical impossibility. The numbers don't lie. Warhammer 40k operates on scales that make Marvel physics look quaint. Tony's genius works great against human-level threats, but the grimdark future plays by rules that turn intelligence into a liability. Which impossible matchup would you want to see analyzed next? Subscribe for more reality checks.